And not only is life short, but it comes at us in seasons. This is another truth that we have to remember. There's a time for everything under heaven, the Bible says, a season for, for every activity. If you really want to uh, screw up your life, anybody want to screw up your life? Raise your hand right now. Then uh, <laughs> forget this truth. And the thing about seasons that you have to remember is because it's a season and we know it's coming, they can be predicted and prepared for. You don't wait till winter to cut your firewood, right? You don't wait till summer to plant your garden. Hurricane season has just begun. Now, if you live on the coast, you don't wait till the storm is right there to buy your plywood and your supplies. That's the thing about seasons. And David knew that a new season was approaching him. When his physical strength would be gone, uh, he says to God, forsake me not when my strength is, is spent. And as I've thought about the passage of time over the years, it's, it's my thought that uh, these seasons come in spurts of roughly 20 years. You talk about 20 being a number of completeness and, and, and wholeness. Well, you tell me if, if this preaches the first season, I've even named them, the first uh, season, the first 20 years of life, or, or your learning years. You know, where you're growing and, exp and exploring and, and experimenting, discovering new things. The second 20 years are, are what I call your launching years. 21 to 40, the prime season for launching your career, your family, and your future. The third season, the next 20 years, are your leading years. 41 to 60, where you're at the height of your physical and emotional and intellectual powers. And so run hard, run strong in this season. But then the fourth season, 61, ages 61 to 80, are the losing years. For your losses are starting to mount. You've lost your kids. The nest is empty now. They're in their own launching phase. The loss of energy, the loss of health, the loss of air. <laughs> the loss of friends and family as death begins to nibble away at the orbit of those you love. Sounds all bad, but we need to say, biblically speaking, spiritually, this can be the most fruitful season of all. The righteous still bear fruit in old age, the Bible says. They are ever full of sap and green. <laughs> it's the Psalms again. Psalm 92, 14. Are you starting to get the idea that, that you should be reading a lot of the Psalms? Paul said to the Corinthians that though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed every day. Oh, the losing season is a wonderful season for God's saints because more and more of our attention and our energy and time is spent attending to the Lord. These years should not be wasted. And then, if you have, have the strength, if you make it that far, 81 on to eternity is the longing season. It's the season where you're longing to go home, longing to rest from your labor, and your sufferings too, and enter into your heavenly reward. Because life is short and these seasons go by just like that, we need to think it through and adjust our life around those truths. I've journaled most of my life, and, and, and I used to think that if I paid close attention to time, you know, and by writing about it, that maybe I could capture some of it in a, in a bottle or even slow it down. And do you know what I've learned after 20, 30 years of writing? Nope. Can't do it. You can't slow it down. You can only savor it. Milk it. Redeem it, like the Bible says. Redeem the days. Redeem the time, for the days are evil. 